Many problems involving strings and sequences can be solved efficiently using algorithms based on dynamic programming. So in this screencast, I want to look at a relatively simple example that's a good illustration of how you can apply dynamic programming to a problem with sequences. So before we get started, uh, it's important to review definition of a subsequence. So given some sequence x1 through xn, it can be numbers or letters or symbols. Um, a subsequence of that sequence is if there exists an increasing sequence of indices i1 through ik such that for that subsequence zk it's equal to xik. That's a formal definition. The idea is really simple. It's a, it's a subset of the entries in the original sequence that are kept in the same order. So, for example, um, ACF is a subsequence of the sequence A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Because you've got A, C, and F. It's a subset of the symbols in the sequence, and it, the order is kept the same as they are in the, in the sequence. So, what's the longest increasing subsequence problem? Given some sequence of ordered elements, usually numbers, Find the longest subsequence of x, call it z, such that for each succeeding entry, the sequence goes increases. So, for example, here's a simple example. Um, here's our sequence. It's got eight entries in it. And the longest increasing subsequence happens to be the entries 1, 5, 10, and 11. So 1, 5, 10 and 11. It's clearly a subsequence and it go, goes up at each step. Now there are some there are other subsequences, increasing subsequences, that might not be as long. So for example, um, 1, 5, and 12 is an increasing subsequence of length 3. Um, 1, 3, and 11 is an increasing uh, subsequence of length 3. So there can be lots of increasing subsequences. Our job is to find the longest one. So what I'd like you to do now is practice your dynamic programming skills and try to come up with the recurrence relation for this problem. And remember, one way to go about this is we want to find the optimal substructure. So you can think about if you knew the answer for GN, so for instance in the last exa the example on the last slide, if you knew the answer for the whole thing, for the whole sequence, then what answer for some smaller part of that sequence that contains all the elements up to some point would be within the answer for the long and complete sequence, GN? So, in other words, what's the, you need to think about what's the function here that these represent in detail and then what's the recurrence relation that relates them. So take a minute or two and think about this problem. The next slide has a hint on it, and then the next slide after that has the final solution. So take a couple of minutes, try to work on it without the hint, and maybe if you think you need it, go on to the next slide to get the hint. So here's the hint. Again, what you're looking for is the recurrence relation. And think about the following example that we talked about on the very first slide. So we've got x is 1, 5, 12, 10, 3, 11, 4, 3. We know the longest increasing subsequence is 1, 5, 10, and 11. So given that you know this, so gn is equal to 4, given that you know this, what gk for some k less than n, so some point up to here, in here somewhere, is contained within it? So the tricky part here is that what we have to keep track of is the length of the longest increasing subsequence that ends with xk. So in other words, and then once we do that, then what's the recurrence relation going to be? We're going to put in, uh, this should be g of k actually, we should put in the k spot, we're going to look at all the possibilities for i less than k where xi is less than xk. So in other words, xk, the last entry in the subsequence, will be included 
um, as part of the longest increasing subsequence. So it really becomes longest increasing subsequence up to that, including that last entry in the sequence. The table, again, will be a one-dimensional array, and then, of course, we need to figure out how to trace back. And what we'll do, basically, again, as in all the other examples, is we can just use this recurrence relation to help us do that. So given all that, try to work through what the example is. So draw the table, try to come up with the table um, for GK, and fill in uh, what the length of the longest increasing subsequence up to that point, including that number, is going to be. So, for instance, I mean, when we're here, obviously the answer is 1, uh, because there's only one entry. When we're here, the answer is 2, because 1 and 5 are both, that's an increasing subsequence. So try to fill, again, try to fill in the table and see how you do. The answer will be on the next slide. So here we go. Um, we start out with 1. Um, we're trying to compute that, and fi will be 1. Then we'll go to the 5. 5, we use our recurrence relation. There's only really one earlier subsequence to check, and 5 is bigger than 1, so we can increment. It's 2. Um, 12 is bigger than 5, so we can increment that. We get 3. Now 10 is an interesting one. So 10, we compare 10 with 12, but 12 is bigger than 10, so we can't use that 3. But 5 is less than 10, so we can use the 2, and we can add 3 to that. Then 3... Right, 3, it's not bigger than 10, not bigger than 12, not bigger than 5, but it is bigger than 1. So that means we can take the 1 and add increment it and put the 2 there. 11, 11 is bigger than 3, but that gives us a 3. 11 is bigger than 10, that gives us a 4. Okay, so, and then 11 is not bigger than 12. It's bigger than 5, that gives us another 3. Uh, bigger than 1, that gives us 2. So the maximum of that, those, is 4. 4, on the other hand, is not bigger than 11, but it is bigger than 3. So that's 2 plus 1, that gives us a 3. Um, 4 is less than 10, 4 is less than 12, 4 is less than 5. 4 is greater than 1, so that's 1 plus 1, that gives us 2. So the max of all those is 3, etc. You can figure out the rest, I think. So... Fill in the table, um, and again, uh, hopefully you followed my talking through that, but you can see a couple of examples here. So that's it for the longest increasing subsequence. Um, definitely, I encourage you to look carefully at this example. Make sure you understand sort of how we used the idea of the example to help discover what the optimal substructure is, and I think you'll find it really helpful when we start to do more complex examples with um, sequences and strings.